Portfolios allow you to take several PDF files or several files and combine them into one PDF. But these individual files maintain some of their settings and their features while you're still able to see the whole collection as one unit. So let's explore some options for creating PDFs and portfolios and also um, manipulating them or changing their layout. Well, first of all, I can create a portfolio from one of two strategies. One option is I can use this Create PDF Portfolio. I'm going to go ahead and try that. And I can choose a layout for to get started. And I'll just use the click through. That's a good layout for getting started. And then I'll simply add some files in. And I'm going to navigate to a specific location. Let's wait for the server to just jump back in. Here we go. And I have some files that I want to add in. I'll go ahead and open those up. And you can see how the files are getting added. And what's happened is I've created this portfolio and actually all the files have maintained their original structure. They haven't been converted to PDF. They simply have been turned into a portfolio. So I still have my native Word file and I have my Excel file, which I can't view per se, but if I open it up, I could, I could open it up. And right now I'm in the edit mode, so let me move into preview. And I could double click and then open the file. So it gives you some options for opening those files. I'm going to go ahead and move back to my edit mode by switching that toggle. Close that out. And so I have some different options for working with the layout. Now, I'm just going to close this for now. Choose No. And the other option, instead of creating a PDF portfolio, is I could create by combining files into a single PDF. I'm going to add those files again. I'll go ahead and add those same four files. But this time, I'm going to choose PDF portfolio. So I'm combining them create a PDF portfolio, what's happening is that as the portfolio is being built, these files are also being converted to PDFs. And here it goes. You can see that the files are getting converted over and they're using the default settings. And it's just taken a moment here to build it. Well, here's what's different, is that these files have all been created as PDFs instead of as um, native files. And so I can, again, open them up and see them so it doesn't worry about Excel. And even if I went into the edit mode and opened it up, I can still open the file, but it launches it in Acrobat as opposed to PDF. Close that out. I'm back here in my portfolio. So those are some options that we have. And it's just an, a subtle difference, but it keeps you in mind that are you creating a portfolio and keeping the native formats or combining the files, which is allowing you to merge to a PDF portfolio as well as converting any files that aren't yet PDFs. Now, when you work with these files, you can also add more content. So I could add additional files. So for example, if I wanted to add in the Excel file back as the native file, I could even add an entire folder. And I also have some options of adding in web content. So for example, I'm going to go here and add web content. And I'm prompted to put in a URL. Well, let's just go and get some information. So one option is that this has to do with benefits. I could get this page and copy the page. And I will go ahead and add that web content. And I'll put in medical benefits. And I'll use the same option. I'll paste this in first. And I'll copy and paste in the description. So you can see here, there's that page. Give it a moment to load in. And it takes just a moment to process it. 
but here's the page. Now I'm also going to add another page that has some more information. Here is a page on YouTube that actually has some play information. And I'll go ahead and copy that in. Oh, there's that medical benefits. It showed up. I'll paste in my URL while it's still there, and I'll just give it a nice information, a tag. And the file name and description don't have to be the same. Typically, the file name is going to be brief, and the description can be a little bit longer. But I'll go ahead and bring that in. It'll take a moment for it to, to load in. But now these pages are set up. And again, if I'm in the preview mode, I can preview these pages and start working on them straight away. I'll go ahead and access the edit mode again. Now I can not only add in content, but I can also create my own folder. So if I want to create a folder to help me track some resources, I can build that. And this view allows me to simply drag and drop items in to the resources. There we go. I'll close that again. And if I want to drag them, I have this nice option and I can drag and drop them in. But the other way I can do this is to, because this can sometimes take a while to drag in a bunch of files, even though it's visually it's easy to see. I can come here to my panes at the top where I have the layout pane. I can switch to details. And the detail pane is going to give me a little bit more control over the file structure. So I can take this Excel file and drag it in. You can see. And then I can even open up the folder and see the information, use the back button to move back to the entire structure. I can also use these details to reorganize the layout. So if I wanted to put them in a, a different order, I can customize them any way I want. And when I switch back to layout, that information is reflected in the layout. Now this mini navigator here at the bottom can also be used to drag and drop. So again, do you want to do very quickly, visually, or do you want a little more control? You can go into de details and see that information. Now the next step is doing a little bit more customization of the look and feel. And for this purpose, I'm going to actually save this portfolio. We'll call it Portfolio of Benefits. And we're going to create another portfolio from some existing PDF files. So add some files in. And we've got several files that are more text driven, but it'll give us some nice options for creating a standardized element. I'm going to bring in all those pages, go ahead and open them up. And the PDF portfolio will be created very quickly because these files were already set up PDF, so I don't have to do any conversion for them. And when I'm creating these, these files, I have some options for controlling the different layout, the look and feel here. And so I have some different layouts. There's a free form. You'll see the way it moves everything. And don't be misled. You can't just randomly start changing this information, but um, you, ca you can, excuse me, you can just randomly start changing this information. However, it's, it is very freeform. So this could be helpful if you're trying to do a, maybe a think tank or something, or you're trying to do a process board. Here is a grid, linear, which is a little bit like the click-through, but perhaps a little more modern. And then the wave, which gives a much more modern look and feel to it. Now, of these different portfolios, the click-through and the linear are probably the, the simplest to load, the fastest to load. And so if you had a lot of files, you want to use the click-through or the linear so that it's better performance. But it's nice to know you have some other options in there. I'm going to stick with linear. Now there's even an option to import custom layouts. So if, if you start creating these layouts and want to save them, export them, you can. 
and there are some ways to get different layouts. For example, if we go to acrobatusers.com and you switch to Exchange Gallery, so acrobatusers.com and you go to the Exchange Gallery, there's actually a feature for PDF portfolios and here's where you can share or download other portfolios in different settings that people have put together. Let's go back to Acrobat. However, you're going to discover there's quite a few things that you can do without having to be a master coder. So now we'll use the visual themes, and this is a good place to get started. There are some different preset themes. We had clean and spring and tech office. You can see some different elements in here. And one of the things you're going to notice is as you change the theme, in addition to the background and the colors, you're also getting a slightly different element of this card. And the card is representing each file. If I click on the card, I can click on the I button to get information. It flips it over. I can close it and go back and see the front. Okay. I'll go back here to Tech Office. And you can see the card is displayed a little bit differently. Let's give it a moment to load. So the card is displayed a little bit different as are the, the color schemes in the background. So I can click on this. And again, I could bring in some different themes as well. I'm going to leave the tech office as my background or as my theme. However, when I come over to my color palettes, I can see that I can actually create a completely different color palette. Even though I'm using this theme, I decide I want to keep the card the way it looks, but I'm going to create a different palette. I can create from existing or I can just put in my own options. So for example, I can use this tool to slide through, pick a different color, slide up, or if I happen to know an actual color I want to put in, the hexadex, dex, <laughs> hexadecimal um, numbers, I can put that in as well. And those would always be six digits. And I have a couple I'm going to put in for the theme in here. Make sure I put in enough of the, oops, it looks like I missed one of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go, white. And then I go ahead and save it, and I've created myself a new palette, and you can see how it's applying that information. Now, in addition, I can change the background. I'm going to go ahead and collapse the color palette. I can change the background. And it's because there's this image that's being used. I'm going to pick a different image. And we'll just navigate over to a, a source where we have lots of images. We'll use that same sky theme. And with the sky theme, I can even choose some different ways of the opacity. So for example, if I lighten this up, you can see it's becoming slightly see-through and I can see the color behind it. I'll go back up to the top. I could also blur the image, so this would be handy if I want to do a watermark, if I was creating an interesting effect. Okay. And then there's a bit of a gradient as well. You can see as I pull this information, especially if I start doing some of the opacity, you can start seeing how intense does that gradient becoming. So I'll just, I'll leave it kind of in the middle and I'll put the opacity back to high. So we got some definitely some interesting options for the background and we got a completely different look and feel than what we started with, which was our tech office. But we still have that card view and we're able to continue with that. I'm going to change the font. I'm noticing here, this is a little bit of a, we call this a feature, but sometimes when you're working with all these settings, the, the screen doesn't quite um, f uh, catch up with you, so it'll take a moment for that to move around. But what I'm also able to do is change the font. And I like the Myriad Pro, but just to give you a, a, another look and, and feel, I'm going to try Adobe Garamond Bold, and you can see how it's making some changes to the file. And I'll go back to the Myriad Pro, if I can find that one. Here we go, Myriad Pro, and you can see how it makes some changes up here. Now there's another feature that is hidden that you might not have realized, but you can also change the banner area. And you click in the banner area, and you get a, a couple of other tools. It's a, the header property, where you can add images or even text. I'm going to click on 
add image and I want to put in the logo. So I happen to have a logo here and I've got a couple different versions of this logo but let's choose the one that's white and you can see it positions it and I could even resize it if I wanted to. Depending on the type of file it might size easily or it might distort, you have to be careful with that. And then if I click again in the banner area, I can add another image or I can add some text. So I can go ahead and add some text. And as I'm putting this in, looks good. I can also then highlight the text and make some changes. It's still using that Myriad Pro, which is good. I'm going to make it a lot bigger. And it's very big, of course, but I can resize the box so that it fits. So now all these settings I've been able to create, and if I click on the preview mode, I'm able to see it without the different tools, and I'm able to see what it would look like to my end users who are going to be exploring it. I can go back to the edit mode, and again, I can make some changes. For example, I could highlight that text and I say, well, I think it's going to look better if it were white and you preview it and you can see that effect again. And again, I have my details and the details allow me to put some extra information in. We saw that we could use the details for managing the files and working the, with the sort order, but you can also use the details for controlling other tags. And for example, I could add some extra features in, decide to choose those or remove some items and you can see that these items end up being added, removed. For example, I don't really need to know the name because I have the display name and the name are the same. I can remove that. And um, when it was modified would be helpful, but I decide that I don't need to know the tags or the depths, so I can remove those as well. And the summary, since I don't have any information in there, I'm going to remove that. And then I could even add some descriptions. These are going to get stored in the portfolio and that allows me to go back and view that information. I'll go ahead and preview it and when you preview you'll see that there's a preview mode for both the layout and the files which kind of correlates with our details. So here's our layout and our files. I'm going to actually go ahead and save this document. So we'll save this portfolio. All right, there it goes. And then if we wanted to do a few extra options with this file, we could also take advantage of the search command. And if I wanted to look for a specific keyword, I could search. And you can see how it's actually searching all the files, and that's because they are PDFs, and so it's finding all the information that are PDF and allows me to expand that information and see where that information can be found. So I'm taking advantage of not just the fact that these are individual files, but rather that it's a collection saved as a portfolio and using some of the different layout options and edit options to make it more presentable and user friendly. When our users open this up in Acrobat Standard or Adobe Reader, they will not be able to edit it, but they'll be able to take advantage of all these features that you saw in the preview mode. One other note you should be aware of is that Acrobat 9 was able to create portfolios and Acrobat 8 was able to create what was called packages. You can open up a Acrobat 9 portfolio in Acrobat 10, but because it's a legacy version and it's going to be a little bit different, some of those, some of those features in 9 will be unavailable in version 10 and vice versa. So you can also convert those files into a 10 and take advantage of the full capabilities you have in Acrobat X portfolios. Well, this is going to give you several ways of taking your files and combining them into a portfolio that you can then share with your team for archiving purposes, for presentation purposes, and whatever you might discover.